species of life listed in the vet, only 100,000 are considered to be civilized human forms. There are 400,000 different human or human-like forms in the universe. 100,000 of those species are civilized human forms. I don't know if Denmark is counted among those civilized human forms, but uh, whether it is or not, we have to do our best to preserve this knowledge. So our, the Krishna Consciousness Movement is like an, a spiritual embassy or a, a post office, really. We are delivering the mail here. Prabhupada gave us this information that we are trying to deliver unchanged to the world. And then whomever gets this message, like the Bhagavad Gita now, you have to give it further. This is how it works. We take the message of Krishna Consciousness and then we give it. And by giving it, we, our own Krishna Consciousness will increase. One plus one is three. Krishna Consciousness is like that. The more you give away, the more you get. One minus one is one. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamadachati. In the spiritual sense, there is no different. Uh, that, um, in the spiritual world, if you take something away, it's still there. <laughs> so if I give you a Krishna consciousness, I still have it. And more so. So the way to become Krishna conscious very quickly is to give it to others. To talk about Krishna to others, then very quickly one will feel this bliss of Krishna consciousness. And then as Prabhupada says in the Bhagavatam, one will, uh, these feelings of separation from Krishna will arise. Actually we are separated from God and we should be crying. We should miss God. But we don't. We defy Him as a God. Huh, he doesn't exist. I didn't see any God. Can you show me God? <laughs> That's a very puffed up question actually. Can you show me God? Well, can you see anything? <laughs> How are you so puffed up to see, to think that you can see God even if I showed Him? Or even if He showed Himself, you wouldn't be able to see Him. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we, what was the point again? Remind me, I went off the rails here. Yeah. Yeah, but there was something before that I wanted to make a point. But anyway, the point is, is to um, to change uh, the, the uh, we we have in this mature world our karma is fixed from birth. Uh, we have a certain amount of pleasure and pain that we have to experience in this body, and that we cannot really change. So, but what we can change is our future by acting differently in this life than we've done in previous lives. So by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada who gave us this Krishna consciousness, now we can change our course which was basically on our way to hell. This civilization is a hellish civilization that, uh, you know, furthers materialistic ideas. And Srila Prabhupada has mercifully given us, us a chance to um, to reverse that course and go back to Godhead. So, yes, we have to, with a humble state of mind, be very thankful to Srila Prabhupada and the spiritual masters and engage in Krishna consciousness by chanting the Maha Mantra and by studying the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And uh, anyone who does not have the Bhagavad Gita at home is hereby advised to buy it. We have in Danish and English and uh, so on, and, and become serious about Krishna Consciousness. That was what Srila Prabhupada wanted. He actually wanted everybody to become a pure devotee. So, we have to do our best. Any questions, comments? You have said that uh, Krishna is speaking talk about Gita to achieve the exotic succession. But I don't know, maybe you have information about that Yeah, there is a, the, the disciplic succession that Krishna spoke to Arjun is not our disciplic succession. It's a different. Because our disciplic succession is coming from, first from Krishna to Brahma, then from Brahma to Narada, and then much later, five steps from Narada to Vyas, and then the whole disciplic succession. So uh, this conversation between Arjun and Krishna is not included because we are the Brahma Gaudiya Madhva Sampradaya. But still, there are many Sampradayas. And this is the uh, Sampradaya that has the Sun God in it. So there are different Sampradayas. But still, 
it was broken. And now the same thing is happening now. The disciplic succession is broken. There is no spiritual knowledge anywhere, basically. In India you will find, but it's very difficult to figure out what's what. So Srila Prabhupada mercifully made a, a statement by going to the West. And, um, yeah, we are very lucky that uh, he was able to use the uh, technology of the West to further Krishna consciousness. Actually, his spiritual master once said that the reason uh, that um, the West has developed so much technology lately is because that is meant to help the spreading of Krishna consciousness. So all this technology we have, like uh, Facebook and the uh, whole internet, YouTube, it should be meant for spread Krishna consciousness. But it's not being used for that so much. It is also being used for that to some extent, but in any case. So, by utilizing every material facility we have, and by becoming Krishna conscious, by studying and chanting, then we can also, all of us, spread Krishna consciousness and become very Krishna conscious ourselves. Yeah? Um, you mentioned that spiritual knowledge is already within the heart. Yeah, they may know something, but they, it has to be uncovered. It is there, but it's covered by uh, identifying with the body. And uh, so you can say, yeah, yeah, you know, of course, but when you read this, your knowledge will become much more clear. You will feel, you will feel that spiritual knowledge as bliss. Nobody knows anything about spiritual knowledge nowadays. It's, uh, unless you have read Srila Prabhupada's books or uh, have some spiritual information, it's all just nonsense, speculation, and most people are actually just more or less insane. Huh? I mean, people are more or less insane in this country. You, uh, everybody has a very serious opinion about everything, huh? especially in, in Denmark. And in, Scandinavia, everybody's so proud and puffed up. We know everything we think. So one has to somehow be so empowered that you can even cut through that puffed up <laughs> Western mentality and say, yes, yes, you're so big, I know you're so big, just take this. You're so good, you're so fantastic, just buy this book. Read it and forget all your nonsense. Yeah. That was Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati's uh, advice how to preach. You take a straw in the mouth, you go to the big materialist, you offer your obeisances, and you say, you're so great, you're so big, you're fantastic, you're so rich, you're so beautiful. Now give up everything and surrender to Krishna. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that here, but that's the idea. You're very... come in like a needle and not like a plow. Anything else? But did you hear something about your succession? Pardon me? Yeah. Do you know something about it? Do you hear something about the succession coming? Arjun's disciplic succession, no. I, don't, I haven't studied exactly what, if it ended with him or... But uh, Krishna gave it to him, but may, there may also have been others listening there. Uh, they were. Huh? They were. Uh, <coughs> so, but uh, I think Lalita had known something about it. Not more than you say, I mean... Uh, uh, I mean, Ajuna is not known as a teacher, as a guru. So no. He didn't have disciples as such. So no. Also, the conversation we have here, yeah, it's Krishna and Ajuna, but it's actually Vyasadeva who is, you know, somehow or other transcendentally hearing yeah, and because, to Sankhya. Yeah. Uh, so it goes through Vyasadeva, who is an hour disciplic succession. Yeah. He is with me. Yes. But there are many disciplic successions. But still, the point is there. Whenever the knowledge is lost, then Krishna somehow comes. And uh, the Krishna consciousness movement is also an incarnation of Krishna in the sense that it's fulfilling the purpose of in the sense that we are enlivening the devotees and we are killing the de demonic nature. In, in the Kali Yuga, 
there are there's no need to kill demons as such because everybody is basically a mixture of a demon and a devotee inside. So we have to kill the demoniac part of our heart and make the devotional part of our heart grow. And that is done by the Maha Mantra. The Maha Mantra smashes the false ego. Yes? <coughs> Yeah, Channa Avatar is a hidden incarnation. It, it's not a, it's a secret. It's not so obvious, but you can find in the Atarva Veda there are some passages you can find proof of. It. And also in the in the Bhagavad there are some hints that. the last day I read the book Bhagavad Gita, where Prabhupada write like where the one day of Brahma ends, so Krishna takes a world. Yeah, and this. So, One day of Brahma. Four point four four point thirty two billion years. Yeah. That's how seldom Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna comes. So we are very lucky. Anything? You had a question about that? Yeah, because just Krishna, if I became five thousand years ago, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became five hundred years ago. Mm. So, so because in the Gita book it, it says uh, one day of Brahma to come Krishna. It means that Krishna comes from one million years. One day of Brahma is 4.32 billion years, right? Yeah. It's a thousand yoga cycles. So, and at the same time, Lord Chaitanya comes in the same in the same uh, millennium. But I've heard that it's not for sure that he comes in every millennium when Krishna comes. I'm not sure about the details about that, but um, uh, when Lord Chaitanya comes, it is also when Krishna comes in the same millennium. So that is within the same day of Brahma, so to speak. Krishna comes and the Lord Chaitanya comes. <coughs> because uh, Krishna said, you all surrender to me, no? Palitra, uh, <laughs> yet, <laughs> Sarva Dharma Paritya, yeah. Yeah, no, Sarva Dharma Paritya, Ami Kam Sharanam I'm reading that verse every day, how can I forget? <laughs> so, but then, he demanded surrender, but nobody wants to surrender, so then he came again, 4,500 years later and said, okay, now we just chant Hare Krishna, and then you surrender. Chant Hare Krishna and become ecstatic! And then by ecstasy, you can surrender. So he came to give ecstasy. Even that we don't understand. <laughs> we are so dull that even if he makes us ecstatic, we think, eh, yeah, okay. So, but the point is, is that it's easier to surrender to Krishna when you're floating in an ocean of ecstasy than if you're sitting in the forest performing yoga for 60,000 years. That's harder. So in this age, we don't have to do that, but we can in one life become perfect by chanting, but we have to also read these books, otherwise the chanting will not be so effective. Okay, thank you very much. We will chant a little bit and then eat. Prasad. Yeah. All glories to Sri Bhagavad Gita and Bodhita. <laughs> Hare Krishna, and thank you very much to Yarnana Prabhu for a beautiful lecture. So, like I said, now we will chant. So, kindly, everyone get up and take aside the pillows, and we will chant for a little half an hour. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.